we want to look at hormones that are under humoral regulation. This means that the hormone is going to um, be secreted in order to regulate um, an ion or a molecule. So I'm going to write it like this because we only have one ion and one molecule. The ion that we look at is calcium. So let's look at the hormones that are involved with regulation of calcium. The first one is PTH. PTH stands for parathyroid hormone. And the parathyroid hormone is secreted by the parathyroid gland. So that was kind of an easy one. This is going to increase blood calcium levels. And the way it's going to do that is one of three ways. It actually works as a combination of all three ways. Number one, it's going to break down bone. You might remember from AMP1 that the cells that break down bone are osteoclast. I'm sorry, osteo, yes, clast. Sorry, I thought I, saw, I, thought I said blast. Osteoclast. Okay, osteoclasts break down bone, so that is going to put the calcium in the bloodstream, and so that's how it increases blood calcium levels. Another way is going to increase absorption in the digestive tract. Okay, you might remember that vitamin D is needed for the absorption of calcium. So uh, vitamin D will be activated. PTH is going to increase that absorption of calcium. So more of the calcium goes into the bloodstream instead of staying in the small intestine and, and in the large intestines and carried out of the body. Number three is the kidneys. The kidneys are told to reabsorb calcium. Okay. Reabsorbing something keeps it in the body. Secreting calcium would put it in the urine. So the kidneys are told to not put calcium in the urine so the calcium stays in the body and it goes into the bloodstream. Okay, the hormone that is going to decrease blood calcium levels are, is calcitonin. Calcitonin is secreted by the thyroid gland. Calcitonin is going to decrease blood calcium levels. But you also need to keep in mind that parathyroid hormone is going to have a major effect on calcium levels, where calcitonin has a minor effect on calcium levels. Okay, calcitonin decreases blood calcium. Where does it put the calcium? It increases bone calcium. So it's not that it destroys it or gets rid of it. It just puts it in a different place. And you've probably always heard your, all your life that bone stores calcium. Okay, so now let's look at um, the molecule that we want to look at under humoral regulation, the molecule is glucose. Okay, the two hormones involved with glucose regulation are glucagon and insulin. Okay, glucagon is going to be secreted by the alpha cells of the pancreas. It is going to increase blood glucose. It'll be secreted in between meals because it's going to break down liver glycogen. You might recall that starch is the storage form of glucose in plants. Glycogen is the storage form of glucose in animals. So it's going to break down the liver stores of glycogen in between meals. Okay, insulin. Insulin is secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas. The beta cells of the pancreas secrete insulin whenever the blood glucose is high because insulin is going to lower blood glucose levels. Okay, insulin will have no effect at all on glycogen storages. What insulin does is it's going to force the muscle cells and fat cells to um, absorb glucose. Okay, so your muscle cells and your fat cells have said we've already absorbed what glucose we want out of diffusion. And um, the pancreas will say, no, your glucose levels are still too high. So the beta cells of the pancreas secrete insulin and the, that is going to carry those glucose molecules into the cells. And that is regulation of calcium and regulation of glucose. But I also want to talk about one other term. The term is contrary hormone. Okay, 
glucagon and insulin. These have opposite effects of each other. One increases blood glucose, insulin decreases blood glu glucose, so these are contrary hormones. Okay, over here with calcium, PTH and calcitonin have opposite effects, so these are also contrary hormones. That's all.